sustainability is something that you hear a lot of companies talk about, and Micron's no stranger to it. But when we talk about sustainability, we often think we're just talking about environmental stewardship. And I'm here today to talk a little bit more about the fact that at Micron, it's not just about environmental stewardship, although that's critically important to us. We're really looking also at the processes that we have in place. We're looking at what we can do to impact our people and the communities that we're a part of, and also thinking about how our products need to be designed and brought to market to make a difference to our planet. To cover a little bit more of this fascinating topic, I'm joined by Marshall Chase, our Director of Sustainability. Marshall, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks, Martina. Let's talk a little bit more about what your role is at Micron before we jump into a little bit more about the program that you manage. Sure. As Director of Sustainability, I partner with people across the organization to focus on our sustainability strategy, thinking about what are the issues that are most important to us, how do we focus on them, how do we work on them, um, thinking about integration of sustainability issues into our operations and efforts overall as a company, and then thinking about stakeholder engagement, working with our investors, with our customers, with our team members and others to understand the issues that they're interested in, that they're concerned about, and bringing those internal to, to Micron and helping people within Micron understand those. So then let's talk a little bit more about this notion of sustainability being much more than, although certainly not ignoring this notion of environmental sustainability, because it really is something that cuts across the entire enterprise at Micron. Can you tell us a little bit more about that philosophy? Yeah, absolutely. We, we think of sustainability very holistically here at Micron. So it's not just, as you mentioned, environmental issues in our operations. We think about this all the way back in our supply chain to resource extraction. Um, the environmental and social impacts that that has through our direct suppliers, how they're treating their workers in the environment there. Certainly our, our own environmental impact, um, how we work with our people, how we work with our communities, and then thinking about environmental and social impacts in our products and with our customers. So it, as I said, is very holistic. And Micron supply chain is incredibly complex because of all of the suppliers and the parts that go into the manufacturing process and of course the distribution process of our products. It's quite resource intensive as far as I understand it. So maybe tell us a little bit more about what that means when we started to look at the impact that we could have on rethinking some of our processes over the last several years and thinking about them through that lens of how we can be more thoughtful about the resources that are consumed. Yeah, absolutely. So um, thinking about our supply chain in particular, we, we actively manage over, um, over 5,000 active suppliers. I believe it's over 9,000 total suppliers in our, in our direct supply chain, in our immediate supply chain. Um, that's a large number of organizations that our responsible sourcing team has to engage with and consider what are the environmental and social risks there, as well as opportunities for, for improvement, for development. Um, then thinking about our operations, we use a great deal of water, we use a lot of chemistry, uh, we use a lot of energy to produce the, the products that we make. So it's incredibly important for us to think through how we use these, these resources efficiently and effectively and minimize our impact on the environment. And of course, I know that you and your team have a pretty exciting milestone that, that you've just announced. Uh, you've had our 2020 Micron Sustainability Report has just been published. So let's talk a little bit more about that. First of all, congratulations. You must be thrilled to uh, be able to get that out the door. It's always a, a big undertaking, I'm sure. Um, yes. But we'd love to hear a little bit more from you about what you think some of the highlights of this reports are. Yeah, there, there are so many in, in the report. It's, um, it, it is a nice, light, 90-odd page read for, for those that are interested. A little, um, a little bedtime reading, really, <laughs> yes. for all of us. Yeah, um, it, it covers uh, the range of issues that, that I, I've referenced. Uh, so just by way of, of a handful of highlights, um, in our responsible sourcing program, We've increased our focus and work with suppliers on supplier diversity, on um, climate change and, and understanding climate risk, as well as on responsible minerals and recycled minerals, and then um, newer sourcing locations like Malaysia, making sure that suppliers are performing well in, in those places. Um, from supply chain, we can think about our, our people programs where we've been uh, expanding our efforts in diversity, equality, and inclusion with the hiring of a new vice president there as well as expanding paid family leave and hiring a, a new team member advocate role. 
Um, we can also think about our uh, efforts with communities. And one in particular that's been fascinating for me is a partnership with water.org, where we've been um, working on not just philanthropic support for the organization, but including Micron technological support. So partnering, pairing those two, which has been really exciting for me. So really bringing Micron's full strength to the table and to, to our partners, not just, uh, not just being able to make philanthropic donations, which is very exciting. Exactly. Um, and I gather there's a, a little bit different this year in that beyond reporting on kind of what we have done in the past year, you and the team have set some pretty ambitious goals out there. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, this is, this is the first time that Micron has announced true long-term aspirational environmental goals. So very much focused on the environmental impact of our operations. Uh, these goals are owned by our facilities and operations teams together with procurement and our technology development teams. So owned by those who actually have, have these impacts. And what we've done is highlighted a long-term tra trajectory, a long-term tra direction to uh, focus on climate change, to align Micron's operations with the Paris Agreement on climate change, to keep global warming to uh, less than, well under two degrees centigrade, ideally less than one and a half degrees centigrade of temperature rise globally. Uh, that's climate change. So we'll be doing that through our emissions reductions and uh, energy use, converting to renewable energy. We've also got a, a water uh, aspirational goal where we're moving toward 100% reduction, recycling, restoration of water resources that we use. And then a third goal around waste, where we want to get to a point of zero waste to landfill. These goals are aspirational, they're long-term, they're incredibly challenging in a manufacturing environment. And it's great to have executive leadership and team ownership of these efforts over a long period of time and that extensive commitment. Well, that's an interesting point that you make as well about not just having the goals and not just having the executive leadership, but also really having the ownership kind of trickle down through the entire organization. It sounds like that's a pretty key success factor. Let's talk a little bit more about how um, that plays out in Micron with such an extensive footprint around the world and so many thousands of team members were part of our manufacturing and operations teams. Yeah, so this started really late last year, early this year, where we were bringing together facilities leads, people from environment, health, and safety, indirect procurement, um, a range of others that I, um, I'm sure I'm forgetting at the moment, but a, a lot of people into a common room, this was pre-COVID, um, to identify where our greatest impacts are and where our greatest opportunities to address that impact are. So um, dialing into our use of fluorinated gases, our use of heat transfer fluid, uh, energy efficiency in our operations, the ability to, for example, put solar panels on rooftops, but even that is going to be a, a small component of our overall renewable energy strategy, looking at how we use virtual power purchase agreements to, to contract for renewable energy, um, thinking about the types of, of waste, types of materials that we use that contribute to that waste and how we minimize those. And again, our water footprint, where um, thinking about how we can step up our recycling uh, of water internally, how we can use the water that we already take out uh, and use that water more efficiently. So a, a lot of people have been engaged and involved in this, um, thinking through how we manage all of these processes. Well, and it sounds like with such ambitious targets that the company has set, even though they are long-term targets and certainly something that we're aspiring to, really the only way to get there is through thinking differently about yep. kind of every step along the way. So it sounds like you've really kind of brought together that coalition of people who are, are interested in finding those solutions. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's, it's coalitions internally working across operations. So bringing together our, for instance, our facilities people with our indirect procurement people to think about renewable energy, how we use energy, the type of quality of energy that we use, as well as thinking externally, external partnerships that are important to this, because Micron won't be able to do it alone. We have to be working with, with governments, with utilities and, and others out there to achieve these goals. You know, you mentioned COVID earlier, of course, that's on so many of our minds still today as we continue to work through the uncertainty that the pandemic is causing globally. What's been the impact um, from COVID-19 on our sustainability efforts this year in 2020? And have you seen any, certainly I'm sure you've seen challenges that we've had to face with the team. Have you seen any silver linings as well? Yeah. It's, I, I hesitate to call them silver linings, but I, um, I, I think our response to COVID has really been emblematic of it. It, it reflects our overall approach to sustainability. Uh, we, we worked very rapidly to make sure that our people and our communities are safe, um, 
we've been working with our team members to help them help our communities uh, through, through things like our, our philanthropic donations, doubling our employee match and significantly increasing our, our commitment there. Um, and it, it's really been our foundation, our health, safety uh, and, and wellness teams that have um, done tremendous, tremendous work here. I, I, I've been incredibly pleased and proud to be working with people like that that have stepped up and, and made a significant difference in, in our team members, in our workforce and, and in our communities. That, that's one piece. Uh, so just the reflective of how we think about sustainability broadly, but also the fact that we've been able to continue our focus on the goals that we just talked about and our overall efforts in sustainability including stepping these up over the period of the past few months as we've seen uh, the, the COVID um, impacts. We haven't stepped back. We haven't decided that this is time when, when we can let certain things slide. We, we've redoubled our commitment on a range of sustainability efforts here. So that again has been tremendously gratifying and I think impressive um, that our team members are able to do this in, in this circumstance. Right, so not just the, uh, the cause of the day, but rather this is actually something that's really woven into the strategy of the company yeah. and how we, how we operate going forward. Not yeah, it's, of that. It, absolutely. These, are, um, these aren't nice to have items. These are impactful to our business. So thinking about the cost of the resources that we use, thinking about um, the fact that our customers and our investors are, are making decisions about Micron on these issues in part. So um, these are important to us as a company. I think that's a great call out because we often think of these kinds of things as requiring investment, but not necessarily being something that actually has an impact on the business. But to your point, this is absolutely something that is driving decisions by certainly by institutional investors around the world are considering this more and more as part of their decisions, not just uh, decisions based on financials and performance and things like that. We also see it as something that uh, partners and uh, future potential employees absolutely look at when they are deciding what kinds of companies that they want to work for. So would love to hear from you a little bit more about what do you think some of those, maybe a key learning or a key takeaway for business leaders who might be watching us here might learn from our experience at Micron and say, how do, how do you really drive that success within the company and make it part of the strategy? Yeah, it's um, it, one of the key tipping points for me is really employee engagement. So Micron works in a highly competitive talent market. Um, the people that work for Micron are often highly educated. They, they can go to a number of places to work. And especially among millennials and Gen Z, younger workers, values alignment between them and the place that they work is increasingly important. And to the extent that Micron can demonstrate that we care about these things, we care about diversity, equality, and inclusion. We care about climate change and we're working on them, not just nice words, but we substantively are trying to make a difference in the world. This enables us to attract a workforce that is highly talented, highly desirable, and, and keep that workforce. Um, that's, that's super, super important for us. So certainly stories as well with our, our investors and our customers, but bringing in team members who care about these things, being able to keep them, and ideally having them work on these issues while they're here at Micron is, I, I think, a, a useful um, positive cycle. Well, and they don't just have to be part of the quote unquote sustainability team to actually be able to work on those kinds of initiatives at Micron as well. Yeah, it, it, this is an area where we have just a small handful of people at Micron with sustainability in their title, um, but, so many people can work on these issues. Thinking about people in, in procurement, it's not just how do you procure the lowest cost energy, how do you procure the highest quality, best type of energy for Micron? And that includes renewables, that includes low impact energy. Um, thinking about anything from the, let's say the, the office paper that, that we acquire to the, um, the efficiency of the capital equipment that we procure, everything uh, from the, the small to the large, people can have an impact on that. Whether you're in our procurement teams, um, in HR, um, in our sales teams, talking with our customers about our impact on the world, uh, so many people at Micron can, can have an influence on our sustainability performance. It's pretty amazing to see that opportunity. Certainly it does open up a world of possibilities for folks who are looking to, to create a career that includes so many of these important initiatives. And Marshall, I mean, your, your passion obviously comes through here. We, we are thankful to have your leadership here. But I guess if I maybe close with one question for you, which is maybe a little bit more personal, if you could have one superpower besides all of the ones that you already have today, what would that be? What would help you do your job better? I, the, the one I tend to come back to is translation. So I, I've referenced our, our 
our team members, investors, customers, um, the range of teams that I, I work with at Micron. Uh, in my job, it, it's incredibly important to work with our outside stakeholders, our, our investors and customers and others, understand the issues that they're concerned about and bring those internally and help our operations teams, our procurement teams, our sales teams and others to understand why our outside stakeholders are concerned about this and how it directly intersects with their individual roles. And at the same time, take all the great stuff that our team members are doing, understand the often highly technical efforts that, that we're doing in our operations, in our procurement and elsewhere, and translate that in a way that, that our investors, customers, and prospective team members will understand. Uh, so very different languages if you're talking to, let's say, somebody who's an investor analyst somewhere or somebody who's on a customer procurement team compared with somebody who is in let's say indirect procurement at Micron, um, procuring capital equipment, or directly in our fabs working uh, with that equipment. Very different languages, very different jargon, but being able to be a communicator among them. So translation is tremendously important. Well, it sounds like you also wouldn't mind being able to clone yourself, maybe, to be able to work with so many <laughs> stakeholders across the company. Um, but well, I guess we'll have to leave that one maybe for another yeah. day. Well, well it's, um, the, the, back to the point about having so many people within Micron that, that can work on this stuff. It, I think it's less important to have a clone, somebody who can do what I do, more important to have people throughout the organization who can do pieces of this, because it really does take everyone. It's a great message. I love that and a great takeaway for us here as we think about the role that sustainability plays across the entire enterprise at Micron. Marshall, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this has been a great conversation, some great lessons learned here uh, from your experience. And for those of you who'd like to learn more about Micron sustainability efforts, you can check out our 2020 sustainability report on micron.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. <laughs>